Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me for the Chronicle Journal Overview. I'm going to give you the how-tos of an organized life through bullet journals. Although I do have bullet journals crossed off, so there might be a reason for that that I'll explain in just a minute. But I'm going to share with you today my proven strategy to an efficient and organized life. We're going to learn how to set up your own bullet journal and become more effective and efficient in life. I am totally pumped to help you make your 2017 your best year yet. So together we are gonna do this. Together we are going to make 2017 more organized, more efficient. Your actions and procedures for home and for work will be that much more effective. You will actually Okay, get this, actually have more free time. And we all want that, right? I know I sure do. So before we go any further, let me introduce myself. I am Christine Baker Marriage, and I am crazy passionate about my family of seven. And yes, seven. I am married with five kids, and yes, they are all mine. So I do have a dog too, so I guess it's a family of eight. Um, I also am a successful owner of three businesses. I own a wellness center called Rock City Wellness. We actually are changing it into a co-op right now. Really excited about that. You can find out more about what we offer at Rock City at rockcitywellness.com. I also have a private massage therapy business. So that is very exciting. And right now, today, I'm coming to you as the blogger and owner of BusyMomsCan.com because busy, and I'm doing air quotes now, busy, B-I-Z-Y, moms really can do everything. I am an avid traveler. I love seeing new places. I rarely go back to the same place twice, um, but I've made exceptions for a couple favorite cities. Um, and I always have an overnight bag packed, so I'm always ready to go. I am a zealous life liver. I am ready, ready and um, able to see and do everything. Life has so much to offer and I just want to experience as much of it as possible. And now we are coming to why we are here today. I am crazy bonkers about organization. Um, I'm not saying that my house is pristine or everything is perfect, but I love to be organized. I love you know, to have things in a place and all that, mainly because I have to be. But I have a lot on my plate, and I don't like to drop the ball. Sometimes I still do, but I don't like to. And so I'm trying to create an opportunity so that I can succeed. And that's what I want to teach you today, is how to create a plan so you can succeed too, and all that you set out to do. So I'm going to give you a little sneak preview. Um, I want to give you a sneak preview of my why. And also my holiday card. <laughs> my kids had a crazy idea of doing our traditional family holiday picture in ugly sweaters. So my apologies if any of these outfits look great to you. It's totally not their style. Uh, but it fit the bill for the time, right? But this is probably what my picture is going to look like for the holidays. And it's also my why. Um, all the experts say to know your why. And these people right here, even the dog, huge part of it. So I just wanted to share them with you. They make me happy. <laughs> okay, moving on. Why chronicle journaling? Um, so before we even discuss the changes or the differences between bullet and chronicle journaling, let me talk to you real quick um, about to-do lists. Okay, that's a main reason why I got into chronicle journaling was because I had so many to-do lists. And research has shown that humans have a tendency to sabotage their own productivity. I know you're shocked. I was too. Wink, wink. But there are a few things that the ex those very same experts uh, say that we could do to increase our productivity. And you want to know what the number one was? The number one uh, suggestion was? It was to hand write your list. A growing body of research suggests that writing things out can help you learn or memorize items. One reason being that tactile act of writing engages different brain functions, providing another pathway for an item to sear itself into your memory. 
I think that is so fantastic. It came from a doctor at the uh, Indiana University. Um, but I know for me personally, that's exactly how I operated in grammar school, high school, college. I had to, you know, write messy notes and then I would go home and rewrite them. And honestly, I didn't have to study that much more after that because I had somehow, you know, made it sink in my brain. Now, another fun fact, which I have to admit I might be part of this group of people in this particular statistic, but 700,000 to 1.4 million Americans may have what's called a compulsive disorder syndrome. Um, that This is coming from the Obsessive Compulsive Foundation. And <clears throat> I'm laughing because, you know, people joke about... Um, how organized I like to be and that it may be borderline compulsion, but really I do have a lot on my plate. I'm just trying to, you know, do the best I can and, and be effective. So, but, so what they're saying is that, you know, these 700,000 to 1.4 million Americans have difficulty throwing away anything for fear that they may need it later. Now, obviously there's extremes. Um, I'm not on the hoarding extreme, just so you know, but I have a hard time throwing out my to-do lists and because I um, quite often write down a word or a phrase, you know, if I'm brainstorming or things like that. And so I'm afraid to uh, lose those pieces of paper for fear that I'll never remember the thought process again. But with chronicle journaling, I can put it all in my notebook. I never will lose it. I don't have all this clutter all over my home and my office and my desk. And that brings me to the next statistic which is my favorite one, uh, getting rid of excess clutter, like all those to-do lists, um, will eliminate 40% of the housework in an average home. Now, I don't think my to-do lists would contribute to 40%, but it might contribute to a lot. And so if we can eliminate clutter, if we can eliminate processes, if we can eliminate, you know, guessing what we need to do next, our lives will be so much more effective and efficient. Okay. So let's get back to the differences between bullet journals and chronicle journals, okay? Writer Carroll coined the term bullet journals. Great guy. Took, took him quite a few years to develop this way of managing your to-do lists. It's a brilliant, effective, highly adaptable way, um, you know, to manage these things. It, you can adapt it to your personality, your lifestyle, your goals. But for me, it didn't include everything. And so I wanted to add a little bit more. Um, I wanted to add, uh, I don't want to say depth, but that's the only word I can come up with right now, uh, to my bullet journal. And, and that's why I coined the term chronicle journaling. Um, I've included really a true journaling piece, almost a legacy piece. You see, a few years back, I'll explain why. A few years back, I needed to be more efficient, stop dropping the ball, you know, get things going and, and just really stay on top of my game. Um, so that's why I, uh, I sought out the bullet journal idea, totally fell in love with it, totally embraced it and, and rolled with it. And it was really working for me, but I felt, I don't know, I felt like it, it was kind of lacking some, um, it felt wasteful, you know, to have a, a beautiful journal with just to-do lists, you know, in it. So then my siblings and I were cleaning out my parents' home and we found their journals and their planners. And it was so fascinating to get back to the day-to-day -day mom and dad versus the, you know, they have now since passed and we think of them, you know, in a much wider, you know, picture mom and dad. Um, in fact, it was so moving, that experience, that my kids actually requested that I start, you know, writing a journal so that when I die, they could look back and see what I was thinking, to see what I was doing, you know, each day, to, to see, you know, what was important to me on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really took some time to think about that and, and embraced it. Um, and so... You know, now they can look back and see what was important to me on a day-to-day -day basis. They can see my importance. They can see the, you know, notes I've shared or, or what inspired me or the memories that I wrote down or, or whatever else. And, uh, and they can know a little bit more of me on a much deeper level. Um, so, again, chronicle journaling is, 
like bullet journaling only, you know, hyped up <laughs> with, with an aspect of, of true journaling. Um, I'm excited to share it with you. So, so Ryder created this bullet journaling system as an analog system for the digital age. Fantastic. No reservations about it whatsoever. I created a creative and comprehensive system for a lifetime. Um, and, and you're going to be able to refer to these journals and use their information for years to come. Not just for a reference of, you know, maybe note meeting or meeting notes rather, or, or um, when you saw a client or whatever, but you're going to see how far you've grown and how far you've come. And maybe you might even chuckle a little bit you know, to see what was on your mind that day or what frustrated you or what brought you joy or whatever. You know, it might be a really interesting read, um, you know, a little bit down the line. So I find that, uh, I find it just so fascinating, you know, to look back on some of my previous journals, you know, it's really, it's just a fun thing. Anywho, um, and so let's take it a step further. And Ryder is you know, heavily concentrated on to-dos and um, goal setting and things like that. So am I. I'm all about that. Don't get me wrong. But when you add the journaling part of it, it takes it to another level. You can kind of, you know, go through your thought process and you can, um, you know, take your to-do list and create mini goals from them and then journal about that. And I don't mean journal like, you know, one day in the park I was, no, nothing like that. But like you can really get in depth about your goals and really kind of brainstorm and maybe even mind map, you know, some of your goals out and, and you can prioritize them. Um, you can, you know, color code them. You can, you know, create, create kind of a, uh, a process, you know, for your, for your hour, for your day, for your week, for your month, for your life, you know, and it can all, be journaled. It can all be documented in this one particular, uh, you know, book. Um, and I think that's really vital to your lifetime success, not just your immediate success. Uh, I, I have found it to be true in my life anyways. Uh, a lot of people ask me uh, whether or not I use online apps. I know there's tons of online apps out there like Google Keep, uh, Wonderlist, Todoist, all of those things, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't write down my to-do list, to -do list. I just do them in these apps. And my response to that is, so do I. I use Todoist. It's my favorite one. I've tried them all. Todoist is my absolute favorite one, though. Um, and I love, love, love putting all of my reoccurring tasks in the online app um, so that I have, you know, the app on my phone, app on my computer, it frees up mind space. I have more time for creativity. Um, it's, I put all of the birthdays that I need to worry about, all of the, you know, tasks I need, tasks I need to worry about on a, you know, daily or weekly or monthly or, you know, quarterly or yearly basis. They all go into this, they all go into Doist and it is amazing not only how much, uh, you know, time or space now I, I have in my actual brain, but, um, you know, how it allows me to be more creative, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and so all I do when I do check in my to-do list is I write down uh, the things that I need to do that day or that week or, you know, whatever have you from my you know, from my online to-do list. I just put them in my bullet journal. And then they now are done online and then become part of my uh, written, you know, journaling, written book, if you will, written, uh, you know, to-do list. And I, I love the, how it, uh, the marriage of the two, uh, how I can use such a, you know, what's considered sometimes an old-fashioned, way of doing things, but it balanced, it is balanced by online, uh, you know, or technology. Um, and technology is not always my friend, <laughs> but, and that's okay. But the marriage of the two really, really seems to work. And it seems to uh, work for me. It's, it helps my productivity skyrocket. And 
like I said before, it frees up so much um, time and mind space so that I can be, you know, doing other things, thinking of other things, creating other things. Okay. All right. So enough about that. Let me tell you what we're going to be talking about today in our webinar or in our in our video. I'm going to teach you why bullet journaling is the key to an organized life. I'm going to show you how it will create balance and efficiency in your life. You are going to learn how to set up your own journal, what is key, what in my mind, what is key to include in each journal, and, and how to use it in your work and your life. You will not need two separate calendars anymore. So you are going to work, walk away with layouts that you can use immediately and access to other layouts. I'm going to put those on my website. Um, and by the end, you're going to have a journal that's set up and ready to go. So let me show you the things that I use. The left-hand side picture is the journal I'm using now. Uh, it's leather bound. I love it. Um, it's a six by eight size, you know, typical journal size. And <clears throat> the reason why I like that is because it looks great on the shelf. Um, it holds uh, well together when I'm constantly putting it in my purse, putting it in my briefcase, in the car, on my nightstand, all of that. And so it, it, it really, you know, stays well with that, stays, uh, handles all of the travel. Um, I've also used um, those spiral, or I don't use spiral notebooks. I use the composition books. Sorry about that. Those are also great, but I kind of like the just the feel of the that size journal uh, just to begin with. And on the right hand side side are the other supplies that I use. I love fine tip writing utensils, and I love that new washi tape and a ruler. I use that a lot just to make sure I have you know nice straight lines sometimes. And then those stickers that you get, you know, for garage sales, I use those on my bullet journals. I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, but that's what I use. So bullet journaling is, I think, the key to an organized life. It organizes your main to-do list. I have so many friends that have a million to-do lists floating around. This is going to organize, you know, that. This is going to take care of all of that. These are great uh, for goal setting. You can track your goals. You can track your habits. You can you know, see the progress that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis. You can get excited about it. You can do different colors if you want. You know, whatever excites you and makes you happy. I read a study that um, if you organize your plan or organize your to-do list and you make it pretty and cool and with you know, your favorite colors or whatever, you actually are more productive and you actually want to do um, you know more work you want to do better you want to be better you know, it just it contributes to the whole feel good feeling when excuse me when you take the time to uh, organize your mind your actions your to do's fascinating love that uh, so the chronicle journal is also great for people who love planners I'll tell you what there's one year don't tell my husband this but there was one year that I bought 11 planners in one year. I felt like I was going back to the, you know, business or the, um, you know, like Staples or whatever every month. I just could not find a planner that I liked. And then I found Chronicle Journaling and I discovered that I could make my own planner and it could change daily if I needed it to. I could do whatever I needed it to. And it was fantastic totally changed uh, everything for me. The journal is also an excellent reference, like we talked about earlier. Uh, you can refer back to things, you can refer back to notes, you can refer back to, you know, a special day or, you know, if you can't remember what day somebody was born, you know, if they were born, you know, last week or whatever, you can do it. just, you know, open up your book and you'll find out it's perfect. Um, Marco Polo. I put that down because my kids play this in the in the store. If I lose them, I say Marco. They say Polo. You know the whole thing. But it reminds me that I never have to keep looking for anything. It's always in my book, and and I love that because it saves me so much time from, from going where was that. But all kidding aside, it really it brings about mindfulness so that you can be more present in your everyday life, which transfers over to more important things like self care 
you know, family life, connections with your customers, the whole thing. All right, let's talk about how you don't have to reinvent the wheel anymore. You know, having this journal, you don't have to take, you don't have to figure out what you have to do next year at the same time because you're already, already going to have it documented. There's no more guesswork. You know, the wheel's already been invented. There's no need for round two, okay? But what I love about this is because you're going to work hard and because you're going to set this up and do this for yourself, you get to have a reward. You know, um, my friend Sheila Kennedy always says, make sure you have a reward waiting for you at the end, whatever that is, whether it's a walk or a nap or meditation or whatever, you know, have that reward. And I truly believe that that is how you create balance. You know, every, every sort of work action requires a non-work action and that will um, help you create balance in your life which, oh my gosh, I think we all need more than anything, right? So best way to start your own journal is to just start it. So you can set it up however you want to. I'm just going to share with you what, how, what has worked for me. Um, there's really no wrong way at all. There's no better way other than whatever is good for you. You have to decide what works for you. So you need to ask yourself, you know, what, what am I trying to accomplish? What do I need to keep track of? What do I need to remember? You know, and the, I think the also another thing that you also want to consider is who will see this and who do I want to see this? Is there anybody I don't want to see this? If that's the case, then you might want to consider having a separate journal for those private things. But if you are ready and willing for this to get lost, for this to get read, for this to, you know, just about anything, anybody reading it, then you go for it, okay? Now, now I want to talk about how we are going to use this for work and for life, okay? This is the beauty of a Chronicle Journal. You can put everything, all of your aspects of your life in this journal. You can easily differentiate, you know, between um, I usually differentiate in my life between personal, home, and business, and you can easily differentiate with like color-coded stickers or pens or, you know, pencils, again, whatever you decide. Uh, but there have been several times that, you know, that uh, most of the time now I just put everything on one page and it's a free-for-all, which I'll show you in a little bit, the free-for-allness. Um, but you know, I, everything needs to be in front of me and, and uh, visible for me to see. And, and because I don't have to have two calendars, you know, work and home, life is so much better. Um, really, really, it helps me get more things done because I'm not searching for everything, you know. All right, so let's talk about some must-haves that I think are essential for your Chronicle Journal. Uh, and these are, there's eight of them there, and these to me are the essential ones. You may feel differently, and that's totally cool. Again, this is your journal. Uh, I'm just giving you a template of what has worked for me, but let's go over them real quick, and I'll explain them in depth and show you some examples in a minute. But there's a title page. You wanna know what this is and when it started and when it ended and the whole thing. So title page is important. Content page, this is fantastic to know where everything is in the book. A key or a legend, this I think uh, will add to your product, I don't think, I know, it will add to your productivity because the way you label your to-do lists, or to-do tasks rather, um, will help you set priorities. So if something is you know, of more importance, you'll label it a different way, and I'll show you that again in a minute. A quarter, planner or a quarterly planner, either way, however you want to call it, uh, that helps me figure out uh, what kind of things I need to do that month, what kind of birthdays or events that I'm responsible for, and, and kind of give me a feel of how busy I'm going to be that month. Um, as you can see, my fall uh, is very busy. I'll show you that uh, slide in a minute so you can't see it now. So, But my fall is very busy. Um, and almost every one of my lines was filled up for my quarterly planner, but that's okay. 
That's, that's how it is. At least I know and I you know can kind of plan ahead, right? Goals. This is a huge one. And this, you know, you can take this from just minimal goals to, you know, big goals. Uh, however you want to do it, whatever works for you. Uh, again, I'm going to show you an example. Um, notes, one of my favorite parts. Uh, To-dos, another one of my favorite parts. And the best, daily layouts. All right, let's get right into them. So this is the title page. And I it's not terribly decorated. I usually do a lot at the end when I close the book. But this is the very first page. Um, and I you know, usually say the Chronicle Journals of, and then put my name. Um, I, it's, well, this one was exceptionally kind of boring because I found out that my cousin had died that day. And so I wasn't feeling very creative or festive or, or anything like that. Usually I'm much more creative. Um, so, I, you know, I just, I wanted to get it done, but I wasn't really feeling it. So, but, and that's, I think probably why I put that particular quote there. I do generally put a quote or a picture or doodle or something, you know, on the front page, just because I know it's kind of fun. It's kind of like, you know, the title page and, the, you know, picture, you know, on the title or whatever. It just uh, makes things more lively and pretty. I also want you to take notice of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the red uh, corner up on the right hand side. So do you remember when I showed you my supplies earlier and I showed you those dots that people usually use for garage sales? Well, I use those for my chronicle journaling and red signifies that it's a, an important page or it's a reference page. So if it's something that I need to you know, refer back to or utilize over and over again, uh, basically anything that's not a daily page or a to-do list is a red page or is a red dot. So, and so then what I'll do when I'm all done with the book and I usually end them uh, on the quarter. So the end of December, I will close this one out and start a new one. Super excited about that already. I've already been checking them out at Staples, <laughs> um, but I'll come back and I will put the end date and then I'll either decorate it or just, you know, call it a day or whatever. All right, so that is my title page. Feel free, again, to do whatever you want. All right, so let's talk about the content page. This is on the opposite side of the title page normally for me. And this is, you know, just like a normal book that you would buy at the bookstore. It shows exactly where I have everything placed in the in the journal. Uh, yes, I do label nearly every page. I don't, I don't think I do that for my notes, but I do it for everything else before the notes in my Chronicle journal. And this way I can refer back to, you know, hey, what's my quarterly planner look like? Um, or, you know, where are my to-dos for such and such a month? You know, or if, if I know that um, I wanted to refer back to you know, a to-do list or, you know, to-do items or something on a certain day, I can kind of get the general gist of where that is located. Um, so that's, that's very useful to have and important, I think, for your journal. Another important page is how are you going to figure things out? <laughs> how are you going to label them? And that's your key or your legend. And um, I'm sorry, I write in pencil, so I apologize if it is, uh, you know, hard to see, but I, I usually use a dot for a task and then to say that the task has been completed, depending on what mood I'm in, I will either put an X through the dot or I will check mark it. So again, it, it's whatever, but I put them both down for reference. So in case, you know, in case I felt like I was losing my mind. The other one that I use a lot uh, is the uh, exclamation point and the arrow, the arrow just means that it's moved and the exclamation point means that it's important. And I put a date with that usually. Oh, here's my quarter, quarterly planner. So this is my fall and these are everybody's birthdays or events that I need to worry about. And wow, yeah, it's a busy fall, but it's okay because I got almost all of it done already. And, and, 
and I could because, you know, the beginning of the quarter, I kind of get a feel of what's expected of me, what's going on, when to plan things, when I can fit other things in. Um, it's a really great visual reminder and that I don't have to go to my Google Calendar, my online or anything like that. Fantastic use. Goal page. This is fun just because, it, you know, it's, a, it's like I said before, visual reminder of what's important to you, of what you want to do. Um, studies have been shown that if you write down your goals, you are more likely to actually accomplish them. And I think that's true. And this is not my particular goal page. I got it off the internet because I didn't want to show you my boring goals, but I still thought this was a beautiful representation of that. These are my notes. So I usually take about 50 to 75 pages in the back of the book and I put a uh, divider. You can see the green little page divider on the right hand side so that it's I can easily find it. Um, I usually decorate the page and put another quote on there, you know, just something fun and, you know, goofy or whatever. Um, but this is where I put all of my meeting notes. I put all of my who, you know, where I got, um, you know, voicemail, you know, from, or, or if we had a conversation, if we had a follow-up conversation, anything like that, it all goes in there so I can refer to it whenever I want to. It's a fantastic, fantastic use. Never lose a post-it note or anything like that. These are my to-do lists, just a couple. Uh, I thought of a bunch more in the meantime after I did this video. But this is my December to-do list. And you can see on the right-hand side there that I put a blue dot on. And that is so I know that that is a to-do list. That is my, you know, month you know, or to-do list for the month. And I usually do one for every month. And they're usually two pages long, or I at least allow two pages for it. Just to be on the safe side, I try and not fill up two pages. Um, but it happens. And these are the things that are not on my online to-do list. These are just things that have come up or that I think of or whatever. Okay, I have two daily layouts for you. And this one is the one that I prefer because it's a little bit more organized. And it's also it also limits me to how many to-dos I can do. Um, so as you can see on the right-hand side, I have partitioned out, um, you know, blocks essentially of all of my responsibilities. And um, back in the early part of October, I had a lot going on and a lot of projects up in the air and whatever else. And so I think there's 11 there or 10 or whatever. And so I had to, you know, really, you know, buckle down and figure out what's a priority and, and what's going on. And so I allowed, you know, like three or two uh, slots per activity or you know, per project. And that really helped me not only not get ahead of myself and not be like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to solve world hunger all today. Um, it helped me, it helped me, uh, uh balance and, you know, kind of manage everything in a, in a good fashion. This is my other daily layout, which is a little bit more creative. We'll call it. It's a lot messier. Um, but this is quite often how I do things too. And as you can see, I wrote in all different colors. I wrote all over the pages um, and, you know, just fun things about the day. And you know, I was at my daughter's soccer game and I was writing down the scores, you know, just silly little things um, that I wanted to remember that day. And I don't do it on every day. I, my goal is to do that in 2017 um, because I really, you know, want that to be an everyday thing, but uh, it's an option for you as well. And then there's everything else. Okay, so these are not the must haves, as I have said in the past. These are just fun things that you can add. Um, I went to a movie with my youngest, and we went and saw that new troll movie, super cute. So I wanted to remember that we went to a movie. So I tried to make a little, you know, movie clip and put that memory inside of it. And then my youngest daughter uh, started her first job. And I don't know how she got that old, but I wanted to remember that day too. So little things I wanted to add to that particular, you know, page of that day, but other things I can add to the entire journal, um, weight tracker, uh, you know, money goal tracker, uh, books to read, movies to watch, uh, gratitude page. I love gratitude page. Um, my ideal day. 
I am going to share all these in a future video, um, but these are things that really could enhance your experience and enhance your journal, but they're not, you know, must haves, you know, so, all right. So that is it. If you can believe that, thank you so much for sticking with me. I would love to stay connected. I have a Facebook community on, uh, it's called Busy Moms Can, and I'd love for you to join it. Uh, we do a lot of fun stuff in there. I, I try and inspire you and and uh, and give you wisdom and tips. Um, I would always, always, always reach out to me either there or through my email. Ask me any questions, you know, about this or anything else. I have two events coming up that I wanted to share with you. In the middle of December, I have a promotional calendar workshop. That's going to be a. a, a Due to today's fiasco, <laughs> I'm going to have to adjust the um, how I'm going to present that. But the, I'm going to stick with those dates. Um, so promotional calendar workshop is going to be, you know, how to set up your entire year uh, for 2017. That'll be fun. And then the Chronicle Journeying Optionals, it's going to be for about all the stuff that are not the must-haves, like the, the um, money tracker and the gratitude page and all of that. Okay, so stay tuned for those on Busy Moms Can. And I wanted to take just a quick minute or two to talk to you about Busy Moms. And I know you're probably saying, oh, honey child, you said, you spelled that wrong. <laughs> but I didn't. I did it purposefully because I'm a mom. I'm also a business owner and I'm busy. And so I did that little, you know, kind of play on words because I know, I know how crazy it can get. I know how hard we try and work um, to make it all happen for our families, for our business, for our clients, you know, for everything. And so I want you to know that I get it. And I know you can do it. I know together we can do it. Um, and, and together we can, you know, create a productive routine. We can have more free time. We can make a difference in our own life, not only that, but in the lives of our families and our clients and our coworkers and our friends. Um, we can do this. You know, I, I've been doing it for 23 years and my methods have worked and I'm very happy in what I'm doing and we're, you know, everybody's doing very well and I, I can't wait to share this with you. So with that, thank you so much. I'm so glad you could join me today and I really look forward to forward to talking to you soon. Take care.